Welcome to the Top Business Leaders Show, powered by Rise 25 Media. We feature top founders, executives, and business leaders from all over the world. Chad Franzen here, co-host for this show, where we feature top restaurateurs, investors, and business leaders. This is part of our Spot On series. Spot On has the best-in-class payment platform for retail, and they have a flagship solution called Spot On Restaurant, where they combine marketing, software, and payments all in one. They've served everyone from larger chains like Dairy Queen and Subway to small mom and pop restaurants. To learn more, go to spoton.com. This episode is brought to you by Rise25. We help B2B businesses to get ROI, clients, referrals, and strategic partnerships through Done For You podcasts. If you have a B2B business and want to build great relationships with clients, referral partners, and thought leaders in your space, there's no better way to do it than through podcasts and content marketing. To learn more, go to rise25media.com or email us at support at rise25media.com. Tom Frick is CEO of Bar Louie, a gastro bar with 72 locations across the United States. He's an energetic, versatile senior operating executive with over 30 years of experience in leading transformational change in multiple industries, including consumer products, retail, and restaurants, both domestically and internationally. Tom has a bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering from the United States Naval Academy and an MBA from Stanford. He spent five years as a naval intelligence officer in the U.S. Navy. He's been with Bar Louie since 2017. Tom, thank you so much for joining me today. How are you? It's my pleasure. How are you? Good, thank you. So tell me a little bit about Bar Louie. I've, I've been to a couple locations in Colorado, uh, 72 across the country. What kind of an atmosphere is it and what can people expect when they go there? Well, you know what? It's, it's a magical atmosphere. And I think that's what drew me to Bar Louie in 2017 when the opportunity came up. Um, we're a gastro bar. So it's, it's actually a, a new segment that we spearheaded. It's uh, um, a spirit-led beverage program. So most people have heard of gastro pubs. Gastro pubs are typically beer-led from a from a beverage standpoint. Um, we're spirit-led. We're known for our martinis. We're known for our cocktails, which are we're absolutely terrific. You know, we're the kind of environment where you just go to forget everything. You know, you go in with friends, or you go in by yourself and you make friends. But it's just this really truly magical environment where. Um, you, you just sort of forget everything. You have this great time and, and you know that there, your, your concerns or your worries or your thoughts are waiting for you at the door. But while you're in Bar Louie, it's just as a it's just as a place to relax and have a great time. On Bar Louie's website, it says we listen to our neighborhoods and let them shape us, not the other way around. What does that mean to a customer? Well, well you know, it's it's un- unlike other chains. Um, our bars are all a little bit different. You know, we have a, we have a similar look and feel to them. But but they really kind of fit into the in, into the into the local environment um, with the music to pl- they play with the the people we hire and now with our menus. So uh, um, you know even though we're a national chain, we have regional content now on our menus. So you go to the south, there's there's food unique to the south. You go to the north, there's food that's sort of unique to the north. And it's it's been it's something we've been working on for a while and. This menu that just launched two weeks ago is the first time we have a concerted effort to have regional content to the menu now. You have uh, you've been there since 2017, as I mentioned. How does how do the challenges that you've faced, um, you know, being part of the restaurant industry and with Bar Louie during during that period compare to maybe some of the other challenges you've faced as an executive uh, during your career? Yeah, you know, it's 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 not the intensity of the challenges we face; it's the duration of the challenges we face. Right. So so. Um, I've, I've had an opportunity to do a lot of transformational work and any, anytime you do transformational work, there's intense problems. Um, it's just that with COVID they've been going on for two years now. So, you know, for us, it's, it's that I think more than anything else. And, and just the, the need to constantly be reinventing yourself, um, you know, through these last two years have been, it's really been the biggest challenge that we've faced. Tell me about the kind of impact COVID has had on the Bar Louie brand. Sure. You know, you know, I mean, if you look at Bar Louie coming into COVID, we didn't have a delivery business um, and, and we didn't on purpose because we felt our environment was so special and so unique. We wanted people coming into the bar to experience the great atmosphere and, and you know, everything going on at Bar Louie. So when COVID hit, we literally at, at early, in early 2020 had every bar shut down. And so you 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 know we were we were being told hey that's you can still deliver but we didn't have a delivery business so 
you know, for us, that really set the pace of change for the next 24 months because we literally had to create a delivery business overnight. So from the time we first shut down, within six weeks, we had delivery partnerships established with six different providers. Um, and we've been changing and evolving ever since. How has the uh, in-store business gone, you know, since things have, I guess, kind of lightened up, loosened up? Yeah, our our last bars sort of were able to open in July of this year. So we have bars in California, bars in Michigan, with, and, and bars in Illinois, which are the sort of the last three states to, to open up. Uh, in our case, uh, we, we made the conscious decision and strategic decision to really focus on guest experience. So we continued to um, restrict access to some of the bars uh, or, or reduce capacity capacity in some of the bars if we couldn't staff adequately enough to take care of the guests. Uh, that was particularly you know, keen in late night. So our late night business continues to evolve as we, as we try to get bars open. And, it's, and look, a lot of our late night business came from industry around us and, and a lot of retailers were closing early. And you know that what, what we talk about a lot during COVID, the United States really became a nine to five business, uh, nine to five country, right? I mean, there wasn't a whole lot of late night anything going on anywhere um, uh, during COVID. And I think we're really still as a country trying to you know, re-engage that late night uh, um, element to our economy. And so, you know, our late night business, our three day parts, uh, lunch, happy hour and dinner are doing terrific. Uh, you know, they're just, it's great, but we, we're, we're still a little soft on the late night side. You have been, uh, you've held numerous C-suite executive positions. As I mentioned, you were CEO of HMS Host, which is part of the restaurant industry, and also CEO of Cartridge Worldwide, which is not. How is the restaurant industry in terms of just, you know, managing or working or leading an organization different from maybe an organization that's not in the restaurant industry? Uh, You know, it's that direct link to your guest. Um, I, cause I was also a CEO in, in, in three different locations at Free to lay right? So there's a consumer element to restaurants. You've, you've always got to be innovating. You've always got to make sure that your guests, but even with Free to lay there was always an intermediary. So you were working hard on the, on the packaged goods for the guests and you were really responding to changes in ta- taste and preference, but you were still going through store owners. So I think with restaurants, what I really enjoy about restaurants is, you, you you interact with your guests. There's no intermediary. It's a it's a face to face you know you know interaction um, at all times, and and that's exciting you know because you you really can control that 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 uh, that interaction and uh, you know work very closely with your guests to make sure you're meeting their needs. Is that something that you even as a CEO uh, think about on a day to day basis? You know, if people might think of a CEO as somebody in an office somewhere, um, you know, not worrying about how one customer feels. No, we worry about every guest. You know, I, I, we, we, um, we consolidate our online reviews. We look very closely at our online reviews. So we have a service that consolidates the top 10, 12 online review sites. Uh, we look at it every week. Uh, we talk about it every week. We have our general managers respond to guests who are dissatisfied um, as quickly as they can. And so Look, we're we're in we're in that business. I mean, we take we take the guest interaction extremely extremely serious here, um, and um, uh, it's it's a big focus for us. You talked about the atmosphere at Bar Louis. Uh, my wife and I were we were at, we were at Bar Louis and we were watching a game, maybe getting a drink before a movie, and then we went to the movie, and then we thought, well, we we don't want to just show back up at at the same place, so we'll we'll go to a different place, and uh, we we went to a competitor nearby, and then. We were we walked in, looked around. We're just like we're just going back to Bar Louis. What what is what is it about? Or how do you, what kind of an influence do you have on the culture inside the restaurant? Uh, well, that's first of all, that's great to hear. So thank you, thank you for that story. We appreciate hearing that. Um, well, look, it's it starts by what we talk about. We talk about guest experience every week. You know, we talk to our 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 team members. We talk to our general managers about guest experience. It's what we do. I mean, we've really worked hard to revamp our menu. Our menu has been revamped to make our guests happier. We talk about um, our certain levels of service. We have, um, you know, um, strict programs in terms of how our team members are supposed to interact with guests. We train to it. It, you know, we, we start and finish with guest experience and it, it is absolutely something 
you know, um, that we, we focus on at all levels of the organization. And I think it's my focus on it. And, you know, that, that the fact that we continue to talk about it, that makes the difference. What goes into setting the culture, uh, in terms of, you know, each, each location, if, you know, if you want it to be a positive experience for the guest, what goes into setting that kind of atmosphere? Oh, that's a, I mean, that's a great question. Um, it, and we leave a lot of that to the general manager and the team because the, because our locations are so different. So, you know, we have a location just outside of Gillette stadium in Foxborough, Massachusetts, or we have state, we have uh, locations just between the two stadiums, Pittsburgh, our North shore location. Um, you know, what goes on in those bars are completely different than what goes on in a bar that might be located in a lifestyle center in one of the suburbs, right? It's a, it's a different um, atmosphere is a different challenge. And so it, we, we really work with uh, the general managers and the teams to make, to kind of morph what we do to fit that location. And it's interesting when we talk to our guests, they all know Bar Louis is a national chain, but they all feel their Bar Louis a little bit different. You know, and a lot of our guests have gone to multiple locations or come visit us when they're traveling or on the road or visiting friends or relatives. And they all kind of like their bar Louis and feel their bar Louis is a bit special. And I think it's because of the way our teams work to really kind of integrate themselves into the local market. You earned an engineering degree at the U S Naval Academy and you were a Naval intelligence officer for five years. How did that experience and, and that education help you over the course of your career? And even so right now? Well, you know, I, I think the engineering degree uh, really teaches the scientific method. I, I haven't really done a lot of mechanical engineering uh, since I left school, I did a little bit when I was in the Navy, but for the most part, that just teaches you how to uh, sci- apply the scientific method to problem solve. And I think, you know, when you look at sort of how leadership in general has changed with the emergence of data, I mean, the data involved in making decisions now, when you go back 30 years ago, you, you know, we have far more data, far more instant read, uh, you know, there's a lot more analytics in what we do now than, we, than when I started 30 years ago. And so, that certainly has helped. The, the Navy experience really is how do you manage change? How do you manage complexity? How do you, how do you lead organizations? And so I think it did, it, it did those two things for me. It really you know, taught me the rigor of the scientific method. And then it really, from a leadership standpoint, that experience was second to none. Who are some uh, mentors, if you can think of any, that uh, have been valuable for you over the course of your career? Yeah, I would say too. Um, you know, when I left uh, uh, consulting and went to work at Pepsi, I had the great fortune of working on the this, the chairman of the board staff at PepsiCo. Uh, the chairman at the time was Wayne Calloway. I, I he he still to me is the role model of what a what a CEO or chairman of the board should be. I mean, he was just uh, was just a remarkable remarkable business executive, and then they have the opportunity to present to him twice a month and spend so much time with him, I think really um, is, is the role model in terms of how I try to act from a, from an executive standpoint. Um, and then the second one would be Rahelio Robledo, who was the, the head of international snack foods um, at Pepsi. And uh, there was no one, uh, I've never run across anybody who's a better operator than Rahelio was. And so, you know, he, he really taught me, uh, um, you know, how to, how to run a business and how to manage a business from an analytics standpoint uh, and, and from a, from a thoughts strategic standpoint. So those two would be the, the two that I would hold to the highest regard. Um, COVID has taken a toll on uh, restaurants. It's probably taken a toll on Bar Louie. What are some goals that you have kind of, you know, moving forward in terms of uh, with Bar Louie and uh, how it, how it'll look in the future? Yeah, our, our first goal we've achieved. So we're, we're now, um, you know, driving growth in excess of 2019. So, you know, the, the first one was just to try it. Well, our first goal was just to get back open again. So we've gotten everybody back open again. Then the second goal was to try and, um, you know, uh, uh, start showing positive uh, comp growth, which we, we've done. So we're, we're in good shape there. We now want to get the rest of the bars open to a full operating schedule. So we still have some bars in uh, some of the last markets to open where we're, we're working through staffing challenges and some of the other issues to get fully open. We expect to have that happen in the next three, four weeks. Um, and then next year is going to really be around trying to figure out how to manage the middle of the P&L a little bit better because obviously cost of sales is inflating at a pretty high rate. Labor, co- labor costs are going up at a pretty high rate. So we've, you know, we've got some middle of the P&L challenges we'll have to work through next year. 
I have one last question for you, but first, just tell me how people can find out more information about Bar Louis. Well, we have a website, um, so please come to the website. Um, you can find the nearest Bar Louis. You can see the menu, a lot of great things going on, and then come visit us, because if you come visit us, I know you'll become regulars. So my final question, what are some of your favorite books or podcasts that you kind of have found valuable or you've enjoyed reading or listening to? Well, you know, it's funny. I, I read a lot of uh, nonfiction. So I, I read, um, I just finished Marcus Aurelius's um, memoir, you know, his, his notes, um, which was a fascinating read. Um, I read a lot of military history because business and military, there's a reason they're, they're analogous, right? And so uh, I read a lot from the great leaders in history. Um, and, and, you know, I, it was somebody asked me the other day about business books, and I, I don't really read them because I think, it, you know, what you're really doing is paying an author to go through non nonfiction and draw their own conclusions. I'd rather go through it myself and draw mine. And so, um, um, yeah, I, you know, um, so what, mostly. What is it about military history? Can you give me an, an exp a specific example of maybe something that uh, you take from military history that you've found valuable, uh, you know, day to day or in your career? Yeah, you know, I, I think um, reading military history, the, the, you know, what the, the, the things I pick up on is there's just the resiliency you need to be successful. Um there isn't a military leader, you know, famous military leader that hasn't suffered losses. There isn't a famous military leader that hasn't faced situations that most people would have thought were impossible that they haven't been able to overcome. And I think if you look at the COVID challenge, uh, it was interesting early in COVID, we made the decision early on that it was the greatest opportunity we ever had as business. Not, you know, not the worst opportunity, but the greatest opportunity because it allowed us to rethink the entire business. And when the bars were closed and you were running just delivery only, we had time to fix things that we just had never been able to fix. It did, unfortunately, as an old naval officer, the analogy I used was, you know, that it was like putting a boat in dry dock. And, and you, you know, when the boat's in dry dock, you get the most work done and you get to do things that you can't do when you're underway or at sea. So from our standpoint, we really looked at it as this greatest opportunity that we ever had. And we completely transformed ourselves. And in, when we were in that process and, and we concluded early on, nobody was going to help us. Right. And it was interesting when I was going through podcasts, when I was on calls and I was on you know group uh, discussions with other CEOs, so many of the other businesses were looking for somebody to save them. And they were saying, I need PPP money or I need landlords to give me rent reductions or, you know, whatever it was. And, and they were just sort of almost sitting back waiting for somebody else to save them. And, and we took it early on that it was on us and, and we were going to side, we were going to survive because of our efforts. And if people helped us, great, but we weren't counting on anybody's help. And in fact, we you know didn't get round one PPP money. So we, we um, that's a lesson from military history. You know, I mean, just the fact that you got to fight through it on your own. Nobody's going to save you, you know, and, and your, your fate is in your own hands. Um, and that that's certainly something that comes through. You read anybody, that's what you come across, right? You know, whether it's Churchill, Washington, you read about any of them, they faced impossible situations and just worked through it on their own with what they had. That's a, that's a great perspective. I appreciate you sharing that. Hey, I, I really appreciate your time today, Tom. Thanks so much. It was great to talk to you. It was my pleasure. Thank you. Thank you. So long, everybody. Thanks for listening to the Top Business Leader Show, powered by Rise25. Visit rise25.com to check out more episodes of the show and to learn more about how you can start your own podcast.